In this lesson, we are going to take a look at this MoGraph sound effector and we skipped it because I think uh, it was much better for us to create some sort of a mini project with it rather than to generically explain it on beginning with other effectors and uh, I really thought it would unnecessarily confuse you at the very beginning. So it shares a lot of setting with other effectors so it has fall off deformer and uh, parameters you can fiddle around so that's completely the same but this effector tab is uh, really really much different so it also has this minimum and maximum value and that is as far as it goes with sharing the settings with other effectors here you can see a bunch of settings related to sounds and uh, Ready to get something going, you would have to load a sound file. So let's do just that. Let's press this little guy to open our file manager. And uh, here is my file. And uh, that's uh, just a random music clip from a local artist. And, uh, and it's uh, a little bit uh, of a funky music, but I hope you will find it to be suitable for what we are trying to achieve. Now, you also notice these headphones and uh, I will just hide them now because I want to use them later in this lesson and uh, that is really a simple geometry with a uh, few logical parts to it. So let's hide it and uh, now let's build something that is really, really common and uh, will help you understand concepts inside this uh, sound effector better. So if I hit play now, now this guy here is just meant to play this uh, audio file that we loaded. If you want to see something on this frequency graph, you'll have to press play inside Cina4D on the timeline. So I really hope you can hear that music, it's a little bit of uh, low and uh, I will stop this and add, uh, if I remember correctly, the clip was 730 frames long and uh, that's not really so important, but uh, it's good to know. So let's hit play now and uh, you will see this frequency graph really working and uh, if you don't want to hear the music while you are playing the animation, because this can really drive you crazy if you will hear the same music for, let's say, a thousand times, you can uncheck this scrub sound, but uh, you will know that sound is loaded because this frequency graph is working. So let's uh, stop this and uh, the first part is done. We successfully loaded our sound file and we have it working inside Cina4D. Now with this file I want to really build a setup that is quite common and that setup is a graphic equalizer. So first to do that we have to have some sort of a little cubes going on that will represent the bars on the equalizer and we can do that with uh, creating a simple cube and uh, really scaling it down to some reasonable size, let's say maybe 20% and uh, let's go even more maybe, let's go maybe with uh, this and we will squash it on the Y so it's uh, a little bit squashed and let's elongate it on X to let's say maybe 40, so something like this and uh, this will be our little equalizer guys. So. Let's drop it under cloner and uh, I will use a grid array just in X and Y and let's find something uh, interesting. So maybe this could work. Maybe even double this guy. So times two and uh, put more in between. So I think really this could work and uh, it really sort of looks like an equalizer. Now, let's see what happens if we drop 
our sound effector into effectors list and uh, let's see what happens. We know the sound is active due to this frequency graph. So if you press play, we can see these guys are really jumping according to that music and they're jumping exactly this value. So that's really cool. You can maybe increase this value and uh, gain a different result. But actually what I want to do here is quite different. I don't want these guys to jump up and down, figuratively speaking. I want them to color themselves with the standard equalizer color. So ranging from green, across uh, orange, yellow, and then at the very end, red color. So first I have to enable the color mode. Let's see what we have now. And uh, all clones are simply colored with the white color. Now, why is that? Let's go back. And uh, here under sound effector, here is our answer. These are the frequency colors for these guys. So if you change this, so let's load maybe, uh, let's start with a green color, press play, and you will see all these guys are now colored green. Let's go back. Now let's give it a shot and create a intermediate color. So we said green, orange, yellow, and red, just as uh, in a uh, standard equalizer. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, something solid enough. Let's try with uh, this. And at the end, this would be 100% red like this. So if you press play now, we will still get this green color. And uh, there is a bit of a problem because I have to explain you these settings before we manage to succeed in creating our setup. Now let's start with this first value, which is really simple to understand. So currently all these guys are lighting up immediately. If you create a certain offset, it will simply offset that until that value. So if you want to delay the music, you will simply offset it here. Now, this is the apply mode. This means that this frequency graph and uh, consequently this first guy is applied to all clones and they will flicker according to this frequency graph. So if you change this to step, you will then apply values from this frequency graph across all clones in step manner. That means from the first one also these colors will be distributed in the same manner. So from the first clone to the last clone and uh, it will make much more sense once I hit play. So how about this? This is a really really great. So if I enable the sound now, you will see that those guys are really jumping according to that sound. So let's listen for a moment. And that is really, really great. Let me stop this, go back. Now there are some settings here which are a little bit difficult to understand. So maybe this sample mode is uh, a bit tricky. So it really tells this frequency graph. So let me hit play. Maybe it will be easier to understand. It uh, really tells this uh, sampling mode how to take values from this uh, frequency graph. So if you change this to average, you will see it's taking really the average value. This switch is uh, behaving somewhat differently. So instead of explaining this, I think it's much better to leave it for you to play with this uh, lower cutoff. We'll simply try to cut off the frequency graph. Okay, that hope that makes sense. This compression will, let's say, increase the amplitude, the, the frequency of these guys. So let's go back. 
Now with uh, this filter shape, you can really set a different multiplier for these guys according to this spline. That's a little bit complicated, but uh, I think you understand what I mean. This use filter will simply tell Cina4D to use the filter. Okay, so if I reset this, you'll see it's uh, maybe a different effect. So you're really filtering this frequency and this uh, bandwidth. Let me uncheck this and we will have the behavior we want. Now, we'll maybe change this just a little bit so it's a little bit more bright. Uh, maybe a little bit picky, but uh, that's the way it is. I will just shift these guys a little bit to this side maybe even completely get uh, rid of this and have just this setting this could work so let's stop go back now let's just add a simple transparent material because i really want to mimic that uh, sort of uh, transparent effect of the equalizer and maybe it will look much better and uh, I have to use a color shader. So let's go maybe with the luminance channel. So color shader. And uh, I hope some things are much easier to understand now. And also this sound effect, we have the option if you change this to switch and under parameter enable visibility. Now these guys will appear only when they're sampled. I hope that uh, makes sense. And uh, there is our equalizer setup. I will just change this back to peak and uh, we will continue with the second part of our setup. We stop this, go back. Now let me hide these headphones and uh, I'll introduce you to a second part of our project and uh, we will solve a tiny problem which is only really solvable with Express because this sound effector unfortunately doesn't have the option to directly drive another object unless these parameters are used. So we want to sample the music itself and really drive that object. I really hope that makes sense because let me just show you where the problem is. It will be much easier. So if I clone this, create just a single clone and uh, let me add that same sound effector and press play. You see what happens. It only lights up with the colors, which is uh, okay, I guess. But if you enable any of the parameters here, it will really pulse it according to the music. So let me stop this, go back. Now that is also fine. And maybe you will want to scale this guy. So let's press play and it will also work as expected. But uh, what if you don't want the color on these guys? What if you want just the scaling information or position information from within this frequency graph. I hope you understand the problem because you cannot really isolate that sound effector just to these uh, guys and hope it will somehow affect these uh, headphones. And really loading two sound effectors is really really problematic so we have to find another solution for this. And what if you want to push this setup a little bit Further, let's say that uh, you only want the inner parts where the actual speakers are to be pulsating according to music produced from within this file. That's a little bit uh, problematic also. And uh, also you don't want any color from the sound effector. And unfortunately, there is no direct way to do it except with the usage of Expresso. So I will get rid of this clone and uh, if you remember correctly, if you want to access polygon level when you are working with MoGraph, then this 
poly fx is really your friend and uh, i would put it at the end of this hierarchy so it affects all these guys and let's now find a way to access this sound information and pass it with expresso to this uh, headphone setup so i'll create a null and we'll add an expresso tag for it we'll just uh, scale this a little bit fold this two guys so we get some real estate now let me just for the sake of tutorial once again just briefly doodle what i'm trying to achieve here if uh, some of you are feeling lost so here the idea is to transfer some information from this sound vector setup without the color so i will extract information via expresso then i will pass that information to a, another effector that can be a plain effector which will receive some of the values and then that plain effector will drive some of the polygon components inside via this poly fx guys so i really hope this makes sense and uh, this will also be a little bit more elaborate setup but will also give me an opportunity to show you some rarely used expresso notes so i really hope that uh, you are following that i will get rid of this little guy now let's uh, bring our setup to life so first i will load a sound effector and uh, we'll extract just the object information because if you want to extract something from the effector you want to set this to object now all nodes that are regarding MoGraph are found under this uh, motion graphics category so we are actually looking for this sample node and uh, with this sample node we will extract certain information from this sound effector so we will load the object to the effector input here on the sample and uh, here we'll just extract the strength because i want to extract the strength of something and then let's see what result we will get after we hit play so this is the strength of these little guys inside the effector and it's really tiny but it really works actually that is this data here so if i will increase this you will see that this guy really hits this uh, maximum value so something like this i hope that makes sense so it's reading out the values from this frequency graph and we accessed all these values with this sample node okay so let's go back to zero because i want to show you how to surpass certain limitation if this is a very low value as it is now but before that i will load a plain effector for this poly fx guy so just bear with me for a moment and i will disable our parameters I will enable scale uniform scale and leave that at zero and the reason for it is uh, i want this strength to control the scale of this guy so if it is applied to this poly fx guy that means the polygons will react according to the strength of this guy if we connect them with expresso so let's drop the plane effector inside we can get rid of this result node and we will find our parameter value we'll actually hold this node upwards so you can see what i'm uh, extracting and uh, i'm extracting a scale value i hope uh, you're taking my word on it so that's just for the sake of tutorial parameter transform and uh, unfortunately you cannot see that unless i scale this and uh, here it is we have two scale values and uh, that's a little bit uh, illogical but uh, that is concerning this uh, this scale and uh, this scale 
hope that makes sense. So one scale is for turning it on and off, and second one is the scale value. So let's actually extract both, and uh, we will then guess which one is which. So let me just uh, pull this guy a little bit, and we will connect the strength to both of these guys. So let's see what happens. And you can see these polygons are really reacting. So let's find out which one is the scale we are looking for. So if we unhook this one, then we know that this is the correct value and we can get rid of this uh, additional scale. Now, let me go back and uh, just scale this so we have more viewport area. Now, what if this effect is really too subtle for your taste? Maybe you would want a really pronounced effect, so you will enable this uh, compression to be higher, like this. And uh, unfortunately, you will then also influence the sound file, which is uh, not really a good idea. So maybe you will have problems with your sound. So you have to find a way to increase the strength of this guy in Expresso. That is really simple. So let's just move these guys a bit. I will unhook it and uh, simply multiply this value. So I'm extracting a calculate math node. You will have to take my word for it. And uh, I will hook up this strength with the input one. And uh, I will simply multiply this value, let's say by 10, and then connect it to a scale. So now we have what we want. And with this input here, we we'll basically influence the strength of this effect across this uh, poly FX. I hope that makes sense. Let me stop this, go back. And you can see that uh, these two guys are completely separate. I now have the flexibility to use anything I want on this uh, poly FX. And I left this sound this frequency graph, this uh, complete setup in text. So two setups that are connected and uh, function together, but uh, there is no fear of breaking one with another. So that's always a good idea. So you can see this uh, guys is really pulsating now. We told in the beginning that we want to confine the effect to this area here also on this uh, other side. So just this uh, speaker area should be vibrating in that manner. We get rid of this little guy and uh, we will do just that with the plane effector fall off. So remember, there is a possibility to use object as a source for the fall off. And let's use one of these logical parts of this actual headphones. So let's see, maybe part uh, part four would be ideal candidate. So now in our plane effector, in our source link slot, we will simply drop that part four. And uh, if you press play, you will see that only the area sampled around this distance is actually working. So let's uh, put that to 10. And uh, maybe just 11, and you can see only the speakers inside are pulsating according to this guy. So maybe we can increase this just a little bit, maybe even more. So we have a little bit more of a pronounced vibrating effect, just like this. You can also here under poly FX, under object, can enable this preserve font so it will preserve the shading appearance and uh, maybe I will put this to partial poly and spline so it will be a little bit more easier. So how about that? This is really one cool setup. Just for the end of this lesson, I will enable this uh, scrub sound so you will see that in action. So let's uh, give it a shot and uh, finish it with uh, music. Music